Wow, that sounds good. Yeah, she, she said the uh, Yankees stole her chickens. <laughs> I had a girlfriend whose father went to the medical school. So he said, well, oh, you gotta go to UVA, a wonderful place. And I remember coming through Virginia when I was nine years old with my mother to go into Florida. I said, what a beautiful place. And those two things, I said, hey, Virginia sounds good to me. <laughs> but I don't remember anything specific although I remember a lot of things to say about UVA that are very distinguishing to me. First of all, boy, are you on your own. Yes. <laughs> Nobody pays any attention to you whatsoever. Yes. I mean, you could just walk around and not do anything and funk out. You know? And nobody would know, you know, except the final registrar. Okay, he's gone, right? But uh, there, it really is character building, I think, in that sense. Between that and the honor system, you find yourself after high school. Yeah, hey. I really like the, the whole idea of the way chemical engineering history, you know, the, the giants of our, that really laid the foundation for what chemical engineers can accomplish. And that to me was fascinating to see their, their original think, thought, thinking, into, uh, into the things that we do. And uh, so picking up on that, I said, well, hey, it'd be nice to be able to follow along with that as best you can. And then, of course, I had some wonderful teachers. Oh, yeah, I uh, had a teacher for unit ops named Mr. Winsbro, and he was terrific. And, uh, and Dr. Eldridge taught thermodynamics. And Joe Vaughan, of course, is a legendary English teacher at the university. I don't know if you know that name, Joe Vaughan. So we had a, quite a variety of things, but the outstanding things to me were the, was the great antibiotic, Primaxin, and now the uh, Crixaban, the AIDS compound. We certainly had an interesting start with AIDS. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you a quick story. We had a young MD, PhD from Harvard working in the medicinal chemistry group. And he went to London to give a talk. At that time, this is 1988, pharmaceutical companies were sharing everything they had. He went to London to give a talk on something called a, his concept of a protease inhibitor. And that's what became Crixenman. And tragically, he died on the way home on Pan Am 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland. That was, that was our start with AIDS, this concept. And of course, Merck said, okay, let's pick up on that. And that was 88, and by 95, we had the plant running, which I think is quite remarkable, considering that it's a 18-step process. And meanwhile, as you know, people were dying. It was a death sentence at that time. So we had the big challenge of making as much as we possibly could in the pilot plant, which was, you know, this is an 18-step chemical synthesis. At the end, near the end of the startup in, in the Virginia plant we were working, we were there about six months, and I was booked on a dive trip with some other Merck friends not working on this project. So we went diving, five of us, in a little resort in, in uh, Cayman, Little Cayman, on a little dive boat with 10 people, okay? So we're going out, five of us from Merck, five others, we're chatting. Somebody said, did you, did you say something about Merck? He said, yeah, we work at Merck. He said, you know, I was in the first clinical program, the first 100 patients, and here I am living and diving. So, you know, it's- well, that must feel rewarding. It does, it's very, <laughs> yep, certainly is. Oh, look, I had a little 
chica the other day, but her mother came and took her away. There was a room in the house on Brandon Avenue. So I just wrote advice. I said, can I apply for this room? And it comes back a letter from this, the landlady, right, to my mother. She said, yes, we can, uh, we, Eddie can come and stay with us. And I call my house Rabbit's Refuge. And birds come and nest in my hair. <laughs> Isn't this letter to my mother? <laughs> my mother said, what's going on here? <laughs> So it turns out, yeah, she was she was 90, and could remember the Civil War. Yeah, she she said the uh, Yankees stole her chickens. <laughs> so anyway, she was a she was a landmark, I'll tell you, Miss Jane Slaughter. As I said in one slide, if you picked a good profession. Stick with it, if you like. That's my main message. Um, you know, stick with it. Don't don't give up because it's difficult. Because it will be difficult. <laughs>